So today we're celebrating the IPO of Kava on the New York Stock Exchange. Yes. First, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, uh, under the ticker symbol CAVA. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So what does this mean to you? You know, it's a, it's a milestone moment. It's not the destination. It's it's the beginning of the next chapter in our journey. And we're just thrilled to be able to have this business um, accessible to public ownership. We've got amazing, passionate guests across the country. Being a consumer-facing brand, the ability for our guests to have that ownership is great. And then just the amplification of that awareness at a national level on uh, our food and cuisine, where you don't have to compromise taste or health. And the hospitality we serve it with, just the recognition of that is uh, exciting to be able to have that next uh, opportunity for us. We got connected in uh, 2015, right. and the growth fund invested in August of 2015. Couldn't have had more than, I think, a dozen units at the time. Had started to expand, uh, but that financing allowed us to expand much more rapidly. Yeah, I remember the big test was, could you break out of your home market, yes. not just be a hometown hero, but could yes. you really expand into other places? Right, and we made the... Uh, totally logical choice to open our second market about 3,000 miles from home. Right, right. <laughs> in Los Angeles. <laughs> not down the road. No. <laughs> not in an adjacent state. Yeah. Across the country. But you all supported that, and we, we, we really believe that we could build out a large-scale presence in Southern California, and it really helped informed us how we could go successfully into future markets. And that's when, uh, you know, it was 2015, we started putting in our second digital make lines in every restaurant. Right. As we started to see the shift to increase digital ordering. And you all were incredibly helpful and supportive in helping us think through strategically how we were going to invest in technology because we were very passionate about how that would enable uh, our guest experience, how it would enhance the human experience, not necessarily replace it, but create uh, a better way for guests to engage with us. One of the things I remember too is a, a conversation uh, in one of our board meetings where you, you talked about early on when we had raised more capital for accelerated expansion and at the time very specific about where we were opening units and the real estate we were selecting and just getting the encouragement to say hey let's get out of our comfort zone kind of prove out further portability but it's okay having that support to say we we may not bat a thousand we may miss on one we don't want to necessarily miss but you've got the support to kind of get out of our traditional comfort zone from a real estate perspective and that allowed us to really quickly see how far the brand could, could reach and could expand into markets that we weren't already operating in. That was the kind of partnership we were trying to establish with yeah. you, which was one that gave you some flexibility yeah. to try a few things and for us to, to see how they go, right? You know, we were at a place where there was enough scale to do that. Yeah, I think that's been the theme for me, at least the balance between discipline and innovation yeah. and striking that really kind of Goldilocks balance, which isn't always easy, <laughs> no. but being able to have that growth mindset, but still running a long-term sustainable, economically viable business. You know, when we first started Kava and, and Ted Ike and Dimitri all grew up in the restaurant industry, I waited tables when I was younger, saw how team members were treated. Their moms all worked in restaurants firsthand and really wanted to build Kava as a place where people could have a career, not just employment, and wanted to make those investments to make that a reality. And Having that support, I remember in 2016, we came to you and the board with a proposal for raising our starting national wage to $13 an hour. Back when most states were $9 an hour, we gave our proposal on how it could uh, really help support our team members, reduce turnover, and had full support. And that was just kind of a key moment in being able to accelerate our growth sustainably and reinforce and solidify the culture we were building to that point where our team members saw firsthand that our growth was a byproduct of their growth and we were gonna reinvest in their growth as we grew. To us, it really demonstrated your commitment to building the culture the right way and, and the benefits of the continuity of the team and helping giving your team members places to grow in, you know, internally. We've seen that work many, many times and in many, many situations. And particularly in an industry where there's a lot of turnover, it can make a big difference. So we were. Thrilled that you asked us and thrilled to support it. Not every decision has worked out immediately, <laughs> um, but the support has been there and yeah. the support to navigate some of the adversities we faced vis-a-vis yeah. -vis when we bought Zoe's Kitchen. Yeah. You know, that was a, a huge leap and it was a bit of a left-hand turn from the trajectory we were on. Yeah. But again, believing in our uh, strategic vision, uh, the opportunity that we could go execute 
um, supported the transaction. We, we took Zoe's private, which was three times our size yes. at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and we could have easily headed straight on that path. We were about 72 Kava restaurants having very good success. The natural thing would be to just keep growing those units. But <laughs> here was uh, an opportunity that was unorthodox, that was counterintuitive. And then when we acquired the business, yeah, I'm sure you remember as much as I do, the struggles of that business yeah. and the need to stabilize it so it didn't drag the Kava business backwards. And um, just being in the thick of it, having that support around the table to think through the challenges versus you know, a situation that could have gone very differently um, and, and could have had a lot of question, a lot of doubt, a lot of skepticism. It just um, for myself and, and our, my co-founders and a management team, having the feeling that everyone was in it together to figure out how to make sure this became what we all believed it could become. The value of the company has been innovation and growth. This was a non-traditional way to go about it, but it accelerated the opportunity. Yes. And it was also another way to prove portability in a bunch of different markets. And you're right, it, we, we could have all lost faith for sure. <laughs> but you know, you guys had presented a vision for a national brand serving these communities, both urban you know, and suburban, and in some cases, even rural, that we bought into. Yeah. And, you know, and you never sort of took your eye off that prize. You guys stuck with it, and we were, we were glad to be on the ride with you. And now we have a whole nother opportunity and challenge in front of us for this next chapter in our journey and how we navigate the business in a, in a different environment than we've navigated in the, the past 12 years. And that's going to be very exciting. Yeah, we're very excited about it.